guys today we are going to discuss about the shoulder joint shoulder joint is also known as a glenohumeral joint it is a joint which is in between the glenoid cavity of the scapula and head of the humerus and it is a multi axial joint mean that uh, this joint can move in any direction and uh, it is a ball and sucker joint in which the head of the humerus act as a ball and uh, the glenoid cavity of the scapula act as a socket so when the head of the humerus will articulate with the glenoid cavity then it form the ball and socket synovial joint you can see this one is a head of the humerus and the head of the humerus is three to four times larger than the glenoid cavity this glenoid cavity is smaller in size than the head of the humerus only one third of the head of the humerus is articulating with the glenoid cavity this is a joint which have the more chances to fracture and this is the joint which can move in any direction due to the only one third of the head of the humerus is articulating with the glenoid cavity the glenoid cavity have a rim like structure of the fibrous cartilaginous or the fibrocartilaginous this is known as a glenoid labrum and this glenoid labrum deepened within the glenoid cavity and this glenoid labrum provide the movement of this joint provide the movement of this joint and this glenoid cavity and head of the humerus are covered by the hyaline cartilage these are covered by the hyaline cartilage this one is the glenoid cavity this one is a glenoid cavity and in this the glenoid cavity there is a rim like structure which have the fibrous cartilage and this fibrous cartilage are deepened within the glenoid cavity and this form the glenoid labrum and this glenoid labrum provide the movement of this joint hope so you understand and uh, now we will discuss about the capsule capsule is a structure which covered are the articulating with the glenoid cavity medially this one is a glenoid cavity and this one all is a capsule from here this one is all is a capsule and medially it articulate with the glenoid cavity and literally it come to the this one is a here this one is a anatomical neck this one is a anatomical neck and you can see that it also extend into the shaft region it also extend into the shaft region so is a glenoid cavity medially it attached with the glenoid cavity and as it going to extend literally it attached with the anatomical neck and it also extend to the shaft region and it also provide the wide range of the movement and this lower part of the capsule is known as the axillary rests axillary axillary rests this is known as the axillary rests this is the lower part of the capsule this is known as the axillary rests and from the this one is a superior part and from the superior part of the capsule the tendon of the long head of the bicep brachii come this is a tendon of the long head of the bicep brachii come and pass through the intertubercular sulcus or the bicipital groove it pass through the bicipital groove if you come here i will show in this diagram that bicep this one is a superior supraglenoid tubercle and this one is a infraglenoid tubercle from the supraglenoid tubercle the origin of the bicep of the long head of the bicep is occur so the tendon of the long head of the bicep brachii come and pass through the this bicipital groove and there is also present of the synovial sheath this is present of the synovial sheath this synovial sheath provide the protection the tendon of the long head of the bicep brachii muscles and uh, the capsule have two layers one is a a synovial layer and another one is a fibrous layer there is present 
the fluid into the synovial membrane and the layer which comes in contact with this fluid is known as a synovial layer and it is the most innermost layer of the capsule and there is also present of the outer layer of the capsule which is known as a fibrous layer and this fibrous layer and the synovial layer both provide the protection to the long head of the bicep brachii muscle this one of bicep brachii muscles and here and now we will discuss about the ligaments of the shoulder joint ligaments first of all we will discuss that there is a present of the four ligaments into the shoulder joint and the first one we will discuss that the glenohumeral ligament glenohumeral first one is a glenohumeral as you can learn from the name that this is a ligament from the glenoid cavity to the humerus mean that this ligament star extend from the glenoid cavity to the head of the humerus this one is a glenoid cavity this one is a glenoid cavity and this ligament start from here and extend from the head of the humerus like this this is a and this ligament have three parts first one is superior then middle then inferior superior middle and inferior this is divided into the superior middle and inferior this one is a glenohumeral ligament because this is a ligament between the glenoid cavity and the head of the humerus the upper one is known as a superior the middle one is known as a middle and the lower one is known as a inferior and this pro this is the most larger in size than the others and it provide the more protection to the shoulder joint and the another one which is named as a the ligaments which is named as a transverse humeral ligament this one is a transverse humeral ligament mean that this is a greater tubercle and this one is a laser tubercle and this this provide the protection to the tendon of the long head of that bicep brachii muscles mean that this one and it provide a bridge from the greater tubercle to laser tubercle and through the bicepital groove the long head of the bicep brachii muscle pass and it provide the protection to the long head of the bicep brachii muscles and it extend from the greater tubercle to laser tubercle and this was all about the transverse humeral ligament and the third one is a crocohumeral ligament crocohumeral ligament mean that this one is a crocoid process this one is a base base of the crocoid process and it extends to the greater tubercle this one and when it will extend to the greater tubercle and it pro you can see this one is superiorly present this one is a superiorly so it provide the protection superior last one which is also known as accessory ligament it is known as a crocoacromial ligament crocoacromial ligament mean that this one is a crocoid process this one is a crocoid process and this one is a acromial process mean that this one is acromial and this joint with the crocoid like that and it provide the protection to the superiorly mean that it inhibit the more extension of this shoulder joint and there is also present of the muscles which provide the protection of this joint the main muscles are the rotator cuff muscles the rotator cuff muscles are the supraspinatus muscles infraspinatus muscles teres minor and subscapularis muscles so the supraspinatus muscles these muscles have the insertion to the greater tubercle this have the insertion to greater tubercle mean that it have the insertion here and this muscles have the origin to the supraspinatus to the supraspinatus of the scapula mean that this is an anterior view but if we show here the posterior view like that and this will show a spine spine like structure and from the post the superior this one is supraspinatus the supraspinatus fossa these origin from here and these muscles are inserted into the 
greater tubercle and this provide the protection to the shoulder joint and another one is the infraspinatus the infraspinatus is a muscle which start from the infraspinatus fossa like all these there is a region and it extend to the middle of the middle impression of the greater tubercle here and the third one which is a teres minor muscles the teres minor muscles start from here and end into the greater tubercle and the last one is the subscapularis fossa mean that into the anterior view there is present of the subscapularis fossa this one all is a subscapularis fossa this one is a posterior view but into if we come to the anterior view there is present of the fossa like structure which is known as a subscapularis fossa and this subscapularis fossa also have the muscles attachment with the shoulder joint and these all muscles are known as a rotator cuff muscles and these muscle provide the protection to the shoulder joint and also into the long into the this one is a glenoid tubercle the glenoid cavity and the in through the infra glenoid tubercle there is a region of the long head of the tricep muscles long head of the tricep muscles and to the through the supra glenoid tubercle there is a region of the long head of the bicep muscles and there's also present to the uh, and there's also present the deltoid muscles and also there is a region some fibers of the latissimus dorsi muscle inferior angle and through the inferior angle there is present of the some fibers of the latissimus dorsi and it also extend to the there is a floor this one is the floor of the floor of the humerus and then it will attach it also provide the protection to all of this uh, shoulder joint and this medial lip we know that this one is a medial lip and this one is a lateral lip and this medial lip have the muscles attachment which is known as a major muscle this is known as a teres major muscles medially and laterally have the pectoralis major muscles these teres major and the pectoralis major muscles are also provide the protection to the shoulder joint so if we know that how many muscles provide the protection first of all rotator cuff muscles the rotator cuff muscles are the supraspinatus muscles infraspinatus muscles teres minor and the subscapularis muscles four and another muscles are the long head of the bicep brachii muscles long head of the tricep brachii muscles latissimus dorsi muscles deltoid muscles latissimus dorsi deltoid muscles pectoralis major muscles and teres major muscles and crocoid crocobrachial muscles mean that through the crocoid process there is also a region of the crocobrachial muscles and the short head of the bicep brachii muscles also origin from the crocoid process so all these muscles provide the protection to the shoulder joint and there is also present a structure which is known as a bursa what's the main definition of the bursa a fluid filled cavity which have the fluid and its provide the most elasticity or it inhibit the friction between the bones tendons ligaments and the muscles this fluid is present basically a synovial membrane for example this one uh, uh, i just give an example like this for example this one is a fluid uh, and this one is a inner layer this one is a inner layer this one and this inner layer is known as a synovial layer and this outer layer is known as a fibrous layer and in this layer there is a present of the synovial fluid and if this inner layer mean that this synovial layer protrude the fibrous layer protrude the fibrous layer then this form a bursa like structure and this bursa like structure inhibit the friction between the bones muscles tendons and ligaments mean that if like that this bursa this is a synovial layer and this one is a fibrous layer synovial layer basically protrude this synovial layer protrude the fibrous layer and then the fluid will come out through the fibrous layer and this form the bursa form three types of the bursa this also toward the crocoid process and this is known as a crocoid bursa this also present toward the acromial bone and this is known as a acromial bursa and this also
also toward the subscapularis fossa and this is also known as the subtendinians or the subscapularis bursa and all these bursa provide the protection and this inhibit the friction between the muscles ligaments and the tendons now we will discuss about the blood supply to this shoulder joint basically the anterior circumflex humeral artery artery provide the blood supply this anterior circumflex humeral artery is the branch of the axillary artery which is the branch of the brachial plexus the axillary artery is the branch of the brachial plexus and the axillary artery give the branch to the circumflex humeral artery this circumflex humeral artery move upward and pass through the bicipital groove or the intertubercle groove and then it provide the anteriorly this is a anteriorly and this axillary artery also give a branch posteriorly which provide the posteriorly view or the posterior surface of the humerus or the shoulder joint and this is known as the anterior circumflex humeral artery and the posteriorly which provide the posterior surface this is known as a posterior surface uh, posterior circumflex humeral artery and one is the artery which provide the supra scapular artery which is the supra scapular artery which is region from the subclavian artery this supra scapular artery provide the blood supply to the superior view of the scapula superior view of the scapula and this is the branch of the subclavian artery and the nerve supply of this shoulder joint is basically to the axillary nerve and also the supra scapular nerve axillary nerve is the only is the nerve through which the extension basically mostly occur because that axillary nerve provide the message to the deltoid muscles and also to the teres minor muscles and and if there is a lesion into the axillary nerve then the message toward the deltoid muscle will not happen and from the 15 or the 18 degree to 90 degree 90 degree of the extension is occur with the help of the deltoid muscles and when there is the lesion into the axillary muscles then the deltoid muscles nerve impulses will not happen and when there is a contraction of the impulses will not uh, will not happen into the deltoid muscle then the extension will not uh, occurs and the limb will into the his normal position or the limb into the its relaxed position and not into the abduction or the extension position will be occur so the another one we will discuss about the movement of the scap uh, shoulder joint uh, discussed that this is a joint which show a multi axial movement this is also multi axial movement so this move toward the center this is known as abduction this movement is known as a abduction and if the limb move to uh, away from the center or the shoulder joint this is known as a ab abduction and if the muscles move extend face forward forwardly this is known as a extension and if the joint move back this is known as a flexion if this joint come toward the center this is known as a medially and if this joint will move away from the center this is known as a laterally and if this joint move upward move upward this is known as a elevation this is known as a elevation and there is also a movement which is known as a circumduction which is the mixture of the flexion extension lateral medial abduction adduction and elevation and all these movement then it is known as a circumduction